Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on with the Master Budget Part 5. We're going to continue with the Income Statement. So if you haven't looked at the prior budgets, you want to probably look at the prior budgets. We are, we'll be using part of them in order to create the Budgeted Income Statement. After this, we will be able to list components of the Master Budget, compile the Budgeted Income Statement. Alright, so let's go through the quick list once again of the components of the budget. We have the Sales Budget. We need to do it in this order. We then have the Production Budget. We then can create from the production budget, which was created from the sales budget, the direct materials budget, the direct labor budget, the overhead budget, as well as the capital expenditures for large projects and equipment we might be purchasing, selling, and administrative budget. We then created the cash uh, budget, the cash flow budget. Then we, in between that, in between making our financial statements, such as the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flows, we needed the cost of goods sold and therefore we had to create the cost of goods manufactured so the cost of goods manufactured and the cost of goods sold calculations have been done in order to help us with the budgeted income statement in that case now we're going to move to the one of the major statements of course one of the major statements that we think of when we think of the budget that's the income statement because we're usually thinking about how we're going to perform over time and that's going to be income statement the timing of how we're doing so that's what we're going to move to at this point in time. So let's take a look at all the budgets we've seen so far. We're going to be using some of these in order to create the budget income statement. We started off with the sales budget. What are we going to make? We then use that to create the production budget. How much stuff are we going to produce? And then we use that to see how much materials we're going to need in step three. And then in step four, we needed to see how much uh, direct labor we were going to need. And then in step five, we had the factory overhead then the selling and administrative and finally the general and administrative areas when then we did the budgeted cost of goods manufactured budget and we also did the cash flow budget was in there as well and then the, and the cost of goods sold those are going to be the major components we will then need going forward here to the budgeted income statement so now we are on the budgeted income statement and first piece will of course be the sales so the sales we're going to jump back to the sales budget, and that's where we're going to have the total sales. We just jump back to step one, sales budget. That's going to be line one of the budgeted income statement. Then we have the cost of goods sold calculation, which, of course, we have calculated, and we did that in the budgeted cost of goods sold. So remember, that's in the prior recording where we took a look at the cost of goods manufactured, this number here which we needed in order to create the cost of goods sold calculation, then we can, of course, take the cost of goods sold number and plug that into our budgeted income statement at this point. Then we're going to have the gross profit. That's going to be the sales minus the cost of goods sold. That will give us the gross profit calculation as normal. Then we're going to have the operating expenses, all other expenses here. Within the operating expenses, we are going to have the sales commission and sales salary. So we're going to pick those numbers up by jumping back to the selling and uh, selling expense budget. So we have these two items. We didn't total them up in this budget, so we'd have to add them up. So we got July, August, September for the sales commission and July, August, and September for the sales salary. If we added these up and then added these up, then we would come up with the 13248 for the sales commission and the sales salary 10,005. All right, then we have the general administrative salaries and the long-term note interest and we're going to pull that from here. So we got the general administrative, this one we did total up for the 33,000 and the 15, we're just summing up the quarter, uh, the full quarter, which is of course the 3 months in this case. So here's the 33 and the 15 general administrative long-term note interest then we have the short-term note interest I'm just gonna pull that number in we did that on the cash flow statement uh, so you could pick it up from the statement of cash flows where we calculated the interest on the uh, short-term note and then if we sum these items up we're summing up the operating expenses so we pull them into the enter column we, if we add these up and pull them out to the outer column we have the total operating expenses of the 188 868 and now we have the gross profit profit and the operating expenses we're going to subtract those two out just as we normally would 255 335 minus the 188 868 would give us the 66 467 that's income before taxes 
Now we're gonna assume a tax rate of 35%. We generally break out the taxes separately as a separate light item, even though they are an, an expense, you know, related to all the other types of expenses because taxes tend to distort the picture and we know that taxes vary in relation to net income. So we're usually gonna break that out at the bottom here. So we're gonna take the 66467, we're gonna assume 0.35, tax rate and that will give us the tax 23263. Uh, so there's the 23263. Then if we take the income before taxes minus the taxes, that will give us the net income, the 43204 net income.